Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask the Experts. I'm Rachel Landry and today I'm joined by my colleague, Sam Knight. Sam is the Director of Product Management here at the company. Today, Sam will be talking to us about the interactive conversion job and geographic calculator. All right, Sam, take it away. The geographic calculator's interactive job is a powerful place to focus on one single numeric coordinate at a time. Whether this is for a production conversion or you're simply validating work done by somebody else or maybe a control sheet, uh, it's a very powerful and flexible interface to work with. We have The left-hand side of the interface is typically for input, but it can also be for output, depending on the operation direction set at the top of the interface. For this exercise, we'll be going from left to right. We begin by selecting the coordinate system that we're working in. Uh, In this case, we're going to be doing an example going from NAD27 to NAD83-2011 here in the United States. We start by double-clicking on the blue box labeled System on the source coordinate side. We make a choice about whether or not we want to interact with a map to narrow down our search. In this case, I'm going to say no and look at the full library. We can either search our coordinate systems out by selecting whichever level of the uh, folders on the left that we want to search within. You'll see we have categories for all of the coordinate systems or narrowing those down by type of coordinate system like lat long or projected uh, or specific uh, subregions within each of those folders. We can also just simply search at the very top level. Depending on what you're looking for, uh, it might make sense to do one or the other if you know exactly where it is on the planet or if you need some help in actually doing a search. In this case, I'm working with a familiar coordinate system to me, NAD27. So what I'm going to do is go into the NAD, uh, North American folder and find NAD27 at the very top level of that folder. If you don't know where the object you're looking for is, sometimes searching can help get you there a little faster. We can either double click on that or uh, click select and go back to the main screen. Then we enter our coordinate in here and I'm just going to be working with a simple latitude and longitude, 44 degrees north and minus 70 degrees west. I can enter that as signed degrees as I have here, but I can also use the cardinal directions with an N, S, E, or W, depending on whether it's your latitude, your longitude, and which direction it's going to be going. Those can be prefixes or suffixes. It's a very flexible interface. If you're working with fractional components of any of those, we can use the format button below to get into the nuanced formats, whether it's degrees, minutes, seconds, decimal minutes, decimal degrees, and so on. For my output side, I'm going to do the similar thing. Double click on the blue box labeled system, choose whether or not I want to interact with a map, and again I'm going to say no, and then browse through the same folders. In this case I know that I'm looking for a United States specific uh, system, so I'm going to go into North America, expand that down, and then look in the United States folder for NAT83 2011. If I have any question about which particular set of parameters I'm looking for, I can right click on any of those and select view info. And that will open up dialogues allowing me to explore all of the parameters uh, from the horizontal datum or projection parameters if we're looking for a projected coordinate system and so on. Once we're confident in the system we're looking for, we just again double click on it and return back to the main screen. Now in this exercise, we're going between two different horizontal datums. Uh, Those have disparate systems, and they're going to need to be related by a transformation. That's what the blue box in the center is for. If we double click the blue box labeled coordinate transformation, this examines both the input data, in this case it's a single point, and the coordinate system combination that we have at play and finds all the ways in the database that are appropriate to get between those based on geography and comparing that to the data that you've entered, which is your coordinate. Here we'll see we have a selection of uh, transformations that are either automatically generated combinations that go through different transformations, or we have the NADCON 5 transformations, which here in the States are our current uh, official uh, survey standard for making that transformation. If we right click on any of the transformation options, again, you'll see we can view the info 
and take a look at any of the individual parameters uh, involved. We double click on uh, our, our chosen uh, transformation and return back to the main screen. And in the case of the NADCON 5 shifts, you'll see here, see here we have a number of possible steps that are going to be involved uh, in these transformations. Most transformations involve typically one or two steps. Uh, in this case, you'll see we have one of the more advanced transformations that actually goes all the way through five different steps. Now, if everything is uh, set to our liking, uh, we can go right to the Calculate button. If you're going to be doing a vertical conversion, you can add on those systems and then enter your elevation values as well before moving on. I'm just going to go ahead and hit Calculate. And you'll see our output coordinate come in on the side that we've selected as our target. In this case, the formatting options are set, again, by the format button that we have on that output side. I have the default of decimal degrees set. If you wanted degrees, minutes, seconds, you'd go into that format menu and make your appropriate selections for uh, all the things like decimal precision, the left format versus the right format, and so on. Anytime you touch the interface around the coordinate systems, formatting, or anything, you'll notice that all of the coordinate text goes to red on screen, indicating that the screen is in an unresolved state. Um, that's just a quick visual cue to help you be aware that you may have changed something that could affect the accuracy of the numbers that you're seeing on screen. Anytime you go red, you can just click Calculate again, and it will reperform that calculation, whether it's with a different transformation, different output format, and so on. Now there are a few ways to get the coordinate data out of this screen. We can right click in the coordinate point area uh, in the, the box labeled coordinate point definition. And you'll see there are a couple options there. You can open in Google Earth. Uh, if you have Google Earth installed on your, on your system, uh, we'll pop that open and fly you to the point. You can also save that as a geometry file, such as a, a shape file, for example, that you can load in any GIS application. Under the file menu, uh, you'll see the, the last way to get data out of there, and that is to print a, a report of the, the coordinate conversion that you've performed. This does rely on having a, a print driver installed on your machine, um, and there are various levels of the report that you can choose if you go into the, the print options. I've gone into the print preview, so it's going to give me the defaults here. Um, this formats a one-page report, uh, could be printed out as, say, a PDF or a true hard copy on paper. Uh, contains all the information needed to replicate uh, the conversion. Um, in this case, it's giving me a slightly less detailed report. If I go under the print options, I can choose a detailed report, and that will actually also include all of the parameters of the coordinate systems involved. So that's just a quick overview of the interactive conversions job. Uh, once you get comfortable validating coordinate conversions here, uh, you can comfortably move to all the other parts of the application because the conversion process is really the same. The only additional complexity on the other jobs is in the new types of data that you're working with. Here we have the convenience of just that single point. Sam, thank you so much for sharing that information with us. I know that our users are often curious about Geographic Calculator. To learn more about Geographic Calculator, please visit our website today. And as always, thank you for joining us for this episode of Ask the Experts, and we look forward to seeing you next time.